Welcome everyone, this is Kristen Tomorrow of Relaxation Business Coaching and today we are doing a special expert interview with Cindy Ailu of Bodywork Buddy. And Cindy, why don't you tell us a little bit about why you created Bodywork Buddy? Uh, well, I've been a massage therapist for 14 years and my husband is a software developer. Ah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so several years ago I, uh, well, I kind of started off with not being very organized in my practice, <laughs> which was fine when I had, you know, three clients a week. Um, then I started to get busy and I started to notice that my little paper system that really wasn't much of a system um, wasn't working very well for me once I got, you know, 25, 30 clients a week. Right. So um, I started looking around for a way to be better organized, and um, I did use some uh, desktop software, but the problem with that was it was on my computer at the office, and I could only access it if I was at the office, and all my client contact information, their email address and their phone numbers and everything was on that computer. I totally so can understand that, too. <laughs> like When you're a business owner, you work from like the car, <laughs> like, oh, exactly. you're at a stoplight and you're not driving, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're working, I at least that's me. I'm like always doing something somewhere. Uh, so I totally get that, yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, it started to get to the point where I was like, this just isn't really working. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm like, wait a minute, to my husband, like, uh, isn't this kind of what you do? <laughs> so um, it started out as developing a system for me to use and we, we built it based on what I felt I needed in my practice um, for a solo therapist and then um, um, it kind of grew from there and we were like, hey, if I need this, then other therapists probably need this too. Right. So we started adding more to it and um, and it got to where it's at today and we've taken bits and pieces of what other therapists have recommended and what they'd like to see and added that in. So it's evolved over time. So is that, um, do you welcome other therapists to kind of like email you ideas or talk about okay. new ideas? Definitely. We're always open to feature requests. Um, it, and it may not always be something that will work for us to implement. Um, or if we do decide to implement it, it will take time. But um, but we we love feedback and we love hearing from our members about what they feel could make it better. That's so we're awesome. grateful. That. So what did it feel like to get like your first client like client you know for that? <laughs> it was very exciting. Um, yeah, we we started with just the client management system and we didn't add online scheduling until later. So when we added online scheduling is when it really started to grow because um, a lot of therapists love having everything in one program and not having a different software, a different program for online scheduling, a different program for client management, a different program for bookkeeping. So um, it's and kind gift of gift certificates, a, right? You do gift yeah. certificates. Uh, we track gift certificates. Yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of what I meant. Gift certificates. Yep. We have um, track gift certificates, and you can also track and redeem packages if you sell, you know, packages or have a massage membership, that kind of thing. Oh wow, that's cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So one of the things um, I'm like, I love online scheduling. I think it's really important to have, and I know for me that's what grew my business to the next level um, mm -hmm. because you know you can't be everywhere all the time and if you're in session with someone you're missing the phone call you know what I mean and then people want to call and leave a message and then you call them back you play phone tag yeah um, and I really can't stand that that's like one of my biggest pet peeves <laughs> is phone tag so online scheduling for me was one of the best things that um, that just helped me personally first, but one of the benefits was that my clients absolutely love it. Yeah. You know? And I know as a massage therapist, when you're away for a whole hour, at hours at a time, that's really difficult. And I don't think a lot of um, other massage therapists think about that or holistic entrepreneurs because mm -hmm. they just think like some client, some therapists might only have three or four clients a week. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But what they don't realize is once you kind of introduce that, it will double overnight. Yep. It really does. I've not heard any one um, 
holistic entrepreneur come back to me and say, well, you know, that online scheduling thing didn't work for me. Right. You know what I mean? It doesn't right. usually, it usually works. And then what happens is your regular clients get used to booking that way. They come in, they say that they love it. At least mine mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. And um, they're really able to utilize that when they have their schedule at home, which is nice. Definitely. So can you tell us uh, maybe like a couple more features um, or just elaborate on some of the features? Sure. Um, well, what makes us a little bit different? I think some of the online schedulers are, are starting to have something similar now, but um, we have something that we call optimized scheduling, mm-hmm. which is a, a optional feature so you can turn it on or off. And it allows, if you have it turned on, then it will only show your clients any openings that you have before or after existing appointments. That is so key. Yeah, so they end up with a 10 a.m. and a 7 p.m. appointment and nothing in between. Yeah, that's Because a lot of therapists, a lot of fears that I've heard from therapists with switching over to online scheduling is that they're afraid they'll lose control of their schedule or they don't want those big gaps in their day. So we actually have a lot of features that are meant to give therapists more control over their schedule. We have, um, we sync with iCal and Google Calendar so that you can have your schedule anywhere. And we're, um, we actually have a mobile version right now and we're working on um, creating a brand new mobile version so it will be even better. But so you can access your calendar from your phone, your smartphone. Um, awesome. Yeah. And, uh, and, we also have uh, income and ex- expense reporting so that you don't have, it's like way easier than QuickBooks or anything crazy like that. Oh, wow. It's built to go right from your appointments into recording your income. So someone re- uh, requests an appointment and you confirm it and then they're on your calendar as a confirmed appointment. And then when they come in, you click on their appointment and enter their payment information and everything while they're there. And then that all automatically goes into your income reports so if you like have if a client comes in and they're like oh by the way i have a gift certificate or but but because that happens all the time right oh by the way i have this you know coupon that i found that you had out there or something like that right um so that will go over too yes yeah you can can look it right up in there and you can redeem it um from their appointment within the calendar so it's all meant to kind of mesh and flow from a requested appointment through to them coming in and getting the service and then recording their session and payment info and gift certificate redemption and stuff like that. So, and then at the end of the year, you can just print reports on your income and expense statements to take to your accountant or your CPA. Yeah, that's great. I, Cause you know, sometimes we, <laughs> we struggle <laughs> at the end of the year a little bit. <laughs> sometimes, not, sometimes. Not all the time, but no, not all the time, <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Yeah, so my it's, New Year's resolutions for right. five years from now. <laughs> right. I that. Yeah, so that was one of those things that I was I was not very organized with, and like I said, it wasn't a problem until I got busy. Then to maintain a, a busy practice, I was like, I have got to <laughs> get this together. So it's really it's really helped my practice, and um, and like I said, my husband's the developer, so we work together with it, and. Uh, and we're a small family owned company and um, and in the field ourselves, you know, we, we love massage because that's what I do. So right. it's not just some generic online scheduling system or anything. So, um, you know, we we love massage and we're part of the massage community. So yeah. one of the things you pointed out that I just want to emphasize on, um, I think that a lot of massage therapists do not prepare for the growth. And what happens is they start like playing a smaller game in business and they are always going to stay smaller if they don't kind of like see the bigger picture and prepare, make room for for those clients to come in and um, create those relationships with them. Because I think they concentrate just on like, I need to get an appointment. I need to get someone in that one slot instead of, you know, in a year's time, I want to have an extra hundred clients or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it was very important how you said it was okay when I only had three clients, but when I started getting busy, I couldn't manage it all. And so, and that's what I see, like at least the clients that my coaching clients that I work with, Mm -hmm. they, they were doing fine. And then all of a sudden they're getting a couple more clients a week. And it's just like, that's the tipping point. And then they can't keep up with everything in there, but they're still doing everything themselves. And your software mm-hmm. is definitely something that allows kind of to have, 
another person to help you. And you need Definitely. that when you're growing. Definitely. A receptionist. Yeah, it's like having a receptionist and a secretary and someone to schedule your appointments for you. I mean, I've always joked that massage therapists are the hardest people to reach on the phone <laughs> because yeah. we're always with clients and always in session. And we don't always have time to call people back in between appointments. So if you're waiting until the end of the day and then you call someone, leave a message, play phone tag, by the time they call back saying, yeah, I'll take that day, that day's not available anymore. I mean, yeah. when you get busy, that's what's going to happen. So... What's great with the online scheduling too, people, clients generally book more appointments and further out. Yes. Um, so, cause they're sitting down in front of their calendar already. And so a lot of times my clients will schedule like four or five appointments out yep. while they're on the scheduler. So there's lots of benefits to, to having that available for your clients. And then they don't have to worry about trying to catch you on the phone. Right. <laughs> And I know for me, I don't like taking same day appointments. It's just part of my makeup. I like to like know what's going to be happening the next day and thereafter. So yeah. it was a little difficult at first to try to train my clients to understand that, you know, even though that's acceptable in many areas of the wellness industry, for me, it's not going to work that way. Why don't we um, talk a little bit about one of the other features that I saw that you have is I like the gift certificate, how you can keep track of that. Mm -hmm. Because I know when I first, I mean, when I first started, I literally couldn't even pay for online scheduling. That's how, like, I really had no money. <laughs> right. So things like online gift certificates um, and then people that, there was a difference too, because then I have a service where you can purchase online gift certificates, obviously online. Um, so they're instant, mm -hmm. but then I have the gift certificates in my office that have my logo. They're very nice. They're not, you know, the paper from your computer and mm -hmm. <clears throat> that sometimes gets a little iffy about keeping track with that. Um, because I have an office manager that does help me with, if someone, you know, calls up and says, I want a gift certificate, I just kind of forward that information to her and she takes care of it. So mm -hmm. sometimes, and then when they come in and they redeem it, I'm like, how do I handle all this? So how does that work with the gift certificates? Like how can you merge the two? Um, yeah, when there's a, when someone comes in, instead of putting in regular payment info, you have the option to redeem a gift certificate. And when you click that button, it pulls up all the gift certificates that you sold and you can search for that gift certificate. So when you sell one, you would put that information in oh, to buy your buddy so that it's all <clears throat> and then it shows up in your reports at the end of the year too of how many gift certificates you redeemed and um what amount you redeemed and oh that's a good amount oh okay so but, and then it then it shows as redeemed on there so if someone tries to say use a gift certificate that's already been redeemed yeah. you would pull it up and you would see that it's been redeemed and it would tell you what session number it was redeemed what the date who redeemed it and all that so yeah. it's just so much nicer to um, keep you organized, which, like we said, when, when you're not busy, doesn't you, you can't foresee that it's going to be an issue. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah, when you grow, definitely. And being more organized will help you grow, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that is one of the best <laughs> ways to grow is to kind of, like, get yourself ready for that. For sure. I definitely think that's so important. So that's – and you know what, too, I was thinking yes. – you like you're talking about the end of the year reports it's really important to kind of keep track of where you're at like where did you start okay how did you end how did the year go and it seems like you can probably run those reports monthly or quarterly correct yes yes yeah. you can so that's and so important yeah another uh, uh, cool thing that uh kind of along those lines to see about the health of your practice. We, we have a bunch of graphs and everything in the report section too. So you can see um, how you're doing this week or this month with income and gift certificate sales and um, things like that. But we also have uh, referral tracking. So you, if you reward your clients for, for sending you new clients, um, telling their friends and family about you, then you can keep track of that. So you can see who has sent you who That's and really um, another yeah, great way to see the health of your practice, really, and, and what you need to change from month to month based on, you know, what's happening. So Yeah, that's a really big part in my practice. That's how uh, one of the reasons I was able to go from five to 500 clients in a year 
uh, mm -hmm. was that I have a referral program and I keep up on it, but I handwrite them all out on my little postcards right. that I send out. <laughs> So right. maybe, yeah, that <laughs> your idea seems a little bit better. <laughs> a little more organized, you know, yeah. <laughs> whatever works for you. <laughs> so but what funny. I like about it, too, is like we said, it's accessible anywhere. So if I'm drinking coffee at seven o'clock in the morning, you know, before my massage work day starts at home um, while everybody's sleeping, I can be doing some work on the computer because as long as you have um, an Internet access you can access your account on body work buddy so and do you have like a book now session button that they can put on your website yep you can put a, a schedule now button on your website or you can embed the scheduler into your website and we also have a facebook app so that clients can schedule right from your facebook business page that is so important coming from an online standpoint Right. I don't think a lot of, uh, you know, business owners understand that Facebook is kind of a, a tribe within itself and your regular clients do not want to usually actually leave Facebook to do business with you. So right. the longer you can right. keep them in there, the more business you will get. So that's awesome. So it's like a tab right next to their photos or um, yes. events or things. That's yep. awesome. That's really important. That. Yep right there is will help grow their practice too so that's great and then they can also mm -hmm. use that as i think competitive you know in a competitive edge um, mm -hmm. because there are a lot of holistic entrepreneurs out there that are not growing online or using online software right. or anything online and that's where we're going baby we're like you know we're already on the train right. and we don't want to like get that. left behind right <laughs> You know? Right. And, you know, clients are going to keep getting younger and younger. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> um, so um, as, as we uh, continue in our practice, our, we're going to be getting more web savvy and tech savvy clients and they want that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's a good thing to have as a convenience to your clients and it will actually make your, your life easier as well. I know, uh, like I said, some therapists are afraid of losing that control, but there's a lot of uh, features built in to actually give you more control. So yeah, it's well worth it. So a couple of things I want to talk to you about too, and just kind of get your perspective on it. Um, I mean, you are an online business mm -hmm. and so you have had to learn the ropes of running an online business and how to, um, how to reach people. So could you maybe just talk a little bit about that either by, through your blogging or doing, you know, SEO or anything like that? Well, um, I think that it's, speaking of blogging, blog is a great thing to have. First of all, it will help your SEO, your search engine optimization. Um, you want to blog about, I mean, a blog is a great way for therapists to reach out to their clients and portray their personality to their clients, which in such a personal service is really going to help. I know some therapists might be thinking that because it's such a personal service that we don't need to do things online, but it's so important to have a web presence, have a website, and um, the blog is where your personality can really come through and help your clients feel like they know you. And it's a great way to teach your clients about the benefits of massage and um, to remind them that you're there. I mean, a lot of things, we've been talking a little bit in some groups on Facebook about um, and one of the things that I've blogged about is when you have some openings in your schedule, send out an email once a week at the beginning of the week saying, hey, I have these openings. Mm -hmm. And just doing that, just reminding your clients that you're there really helps fill your schedule. And you'd be amazed how the appointments fill up when you do that. In fact, I'm um, launching a new service right now in my practice. I still practice as a massage therapist as well. And um, I'm launching a new service and I actually sent out an email to all of my clients announcing the new service. And I heard from six clients that I haven't heard from in a long time um, who, who said, thank you for emailing me. Oh, I've missed you. I've been meaning to get in. You know, a lot of it was just it's, it isn't that they don't want to come to you. They get busy with life and they forget. And um, so they actually appreciate that reminder. So the emails and um, blogs and your Facebook page and things like that are just little ways to remind your clients that you're there and help keep you in the front of their mind. For sure. I think that's so important too. 
So I know you do quite a bit of blogging on your Bodywork um, Buddy website. Mm-hmm. Do you do blogging on your massage website as well? Um, I used to, but I'm actually not taking new clients right now with my massage practice. And um, so I don't do a lot of promoting of it right now because I need to slow it down. <laughs> yeah, you and I are in that same position. It gets so, kind of overwhelming, right? Yes. Like it's too much business for right. one person. And I don't want to bring employees on. I don't want to grow okay. bigger. I like my size of my practice. So it's like what you get a little, you start working differently. And yep. that's when you can raise your prices a little bit more. Yes. So yeah, I totally get that. I'm, I'm right with you, girlfriend. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Yeah. So I don't blog too much on my practice. Yeah. Yeah. So most of the blogging that I do now is for Body Work Buddy and it's mostly, um, I try to blog about massage related things. I don't just talk about Body Work Buddy. I talk about, um, all sorts of different things that can help you grow your practice or technology that you, you can use, um, I've talked a lot about tips that helped me to grow my practice, like my referral program and stuff like that. So, um, so it's a good, I, I hope it's a good resource for a therapist. Yeah, I, um, I think you have some so great, yeah. great stuff out there. I really like your posts and definitely you understand. This is the thing is you truly do understand what blogging for what, how to blog for what you're selling. Mm -hmm. Um, because whether you're selling a product or a service it doesn't matter you understand that it's not just about you and your product or service it's about you educating and letting you know people understand what you're about um, Mm -hmm. and how to help them Mm -hmm. and so a lot of times sometimes you know massage therapists will just blog about well this is the difference between deep tissue and Swedish and this week I have this special going on and right. you know they just or when they email their clients they just email them about specials and nothing else mm-hmm. and people don't want to be sold at <laughs> right clients actually view us as experts in massage and body work and they want to learn from us yeah um, you know I made a post on Facebook the other day about uh, dry brushing I mean that's something that you can like educate your clients on and um, clients like I said, they view us as experts and, and they want to learn what you have to teach them. So a blog is a great way to do that. Yeah. So how much, we'll say either percentage or, you know, hours per week do you think you spend on blogging and and building like the marketing aspect of your business, not building the software and coming up with new ideas and things like that? Um, well, my husband handles most of the building of the software and um, I help in the design and everything of that, but I mostly do marketing and customer service stuff for that. So, um, I would say I probably spend 10 hours a week of marketing and blogging. I haven't been, I've been a little slow on blogging lately. Last year I was blogging three times a week and so I was dedicating a lot of time to it. Um, but now I'm kind of cutting back to like once a week. So, um, and then the rest of my time is spent with customer service and, um, things like that. So, but a majority of what we're doing is social media marketing, um, because the therapists that are going to be a good fit for us, or we're a good fit for them, are therapists that are already online. Um, so you're going to where your clients are at. Right. Right. So you know your ideal client. You're not just like out in the wind, just like, oh. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I definitely think that, like we spoke about the clients who are afraid of online scheduling, and I think that um, that there's, you know, definitely um, benefits for them, and I, and I do address that. But um, I think just like with our clients, massage therapists are going to be getting younger and more web savvy too and are going to be looking for, um, online, you know, sources for yeah. their software. So. so what are you doing? What do you think you're doing on Facebook? That's getting a lot. Um, we'll say, I say engagement because that's the actual word, but just the buzz. What do you think that you're doing on there? That's really bringing a lot of buzz to your brand. Well, um, the first and foremost that our product has to be good. Um, so similar with massage, you have to offer a good service 
and a good value for what they're getting. Um, then as far as the buzz, um, word of mouth, and with most of the stuff that I do on Facebook, um, I don't, just like with blogging, I don't post about us. Um, occasionally I will post an informational thing about Body Work Buddy, but most of the stuff that we share is um, educational for massage or something for massage therapists to share with their clients or fun, funny things to share with massage related things. Hmm. Um, if you on your Facebook page are just posting your specials or all about me or, you know, clients to get in that engagement, you need to um, post things that they can relate to and are interested in and want to learn more about. You can't just talk about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And do you think that you're getting making sales through using Facebook? Um, yeah, actually, a good percentage of our members have come through Facebook. So and we have a 15 day. Sorry. Oh, go sorry. Ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say we have a free 15 day trial so you can try it without putting in your credit card information or, or having any risk at all. Mm -hmm. um, and if you decide not to continue, then it just expires on its own. And so we don't like automatically charge a credit card or anything like that. Um, so no, I forgot where I was going with that. Oh, that's, a, no, that's okay. Um, but yeah, so we do get a lot of signups from, from Facebook yeah, and, no, um, so and from the book, actually. Do you, like, do you use Google Analytics to look through that? How do you know that they're coming from Facebook? Are they oh, telling you? That's a great question. Um, when you sign up, we ask them where they've heard from us. How do they hear about us? Uh, which is definitely relating to massage practice is definitely something that client, uh, massage therapists should be asking their clients so that they know what works and what doesn't. Um, we do also use Google Analytics and stuff too. Um, yeah. But we do have right on our, our registration form um, how people heard about us. So, One of the tips I want to give about for massage practice um, that I know helped me with, with mine, understanding like where my clients were coming yeah. from, is on my medical history form at the very top I say how did you hear about us and like immediately when I look at my form I don't even look at the person's name I look at like where did you hear about right. us and if there's um, you know blank I'll say how did you hear about us so I can fill it in myself and if they just mm -hmm. say friend or online I ask more questions to find out more so I'm always very inquisitive about that um, to really understand, like, okay, where is this person truly coming mm -hmm. from? So, yeah, that's so important, I think, just like what you're saying, for sure. So yeah. do you do Twitter at all? Uh, we do do Twitter, and I was just linking it to Facebook for a long time. I'm just now kind of really jumping into Twitter, so still kind of new there. <laughs> yeah, now, do you do Twitter for your massage practice? I do. You do? I do. I have, have one of the few. <laughs> <laughs> so many yep. people have Twitter, but they're like, I don't know what, like, I don't even have one for mine because I tried and I gave up on it. But for my coaching business, it works amazingly. So mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so what do you kind of things do you post on Twitter for your massage practice? Cause I can't give any information about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I am still learning with Twitter too. Um, mainly with my massage practice, I, I post the same things as, um, I do on Facebook. Okay. for my massage practice. So as far as um, one thing with social media that I would have to say with massage is um, it might not be something that you directly see clients coming from mm -hmm. um, because it's a local business and you're reaching people all over the world, but it's definitely something that you can help you bring people to your website or your blog. And those things, more traffic to your website is going to help your search engine optimization. Yeah. So even if you don't necessarily see clients walking right in the door saying, I saw you on Twitter um, or Facebook, those things are worth it because it will definitely help traffic to your site, which ultimately will help you get found on Google, which will help you get clients, local yeah. clients. <laughs> yeah, right. And that's what you want is you want those people like calling, you know, calling and saying, you know, right. Can I book an appointment. So that's so important. Yeah, for sure. So how many hours a week do you think you work in your massage practice? Um, I've cut down to 15 now. I was at one point um, over 30, and that was oh too God. much. 
And that was a while ago, but um, I do ashiatsu. I also um, teach ashiatsu oriental bar therapy in Michigan. And so when I had started doing ashiatsu, um, working with my feet, I was like, oh, um, I can do eight massages a day. Um, so I started doing that for a while. And then, uh, well, physically, I can do that many. Um, mentally, it's a good idea for me to um, limit how many I do. Yeah. Uh, so I was at about 25 um, a week when I was just doing massage. But now that I'm teaching and also doing body work, buddy, I'm down to about 15 a week. Yeah, that's a nice number. <laughs> that's <Yeah. laughs> awesome that you do that. I've been like, so I so badly want to study that that modality. Oh, that's awesome. It yeah. totally saved my hands. I mean, it was at about the seven year mark that um, I started to really hurt. And I thought, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be able to do a massage. And so for me, I feel really passionately about it because I know it really um, saved my practice and saved my body and revitalized my practice, too, and made me fall in love with massage again. You know, it's hard to love massage when you hurt at the end of the day. Yeah. So um, it helped me change that. So. Yeah, a lot of people don't talk about that, that the like downside of using your body, you know, as your tool. Uh, and it's mentally yeah. draining, physically draining for sure. So and how did you find I'm just so curious about it. How did you find your current clients to like want to switch over to getting massaged by feet? <laughs> or yeah. how do you how did you like get out there to tell just new clients about it? Um, I was already fairly busy when I started doing Ashiatsu and how I got my existing clients to switch over was I gave them all um, a gift certificate to try 30 minutes of it. So um, them not having to give up their regular appointment to try it made them more open to it mm -hmm. and um, you know risk-free they didn't have to pay for it or anything and um, like all but one switched over to it. Um, wow. And because as soon as they feel it, they they love it. And um, the thing about any new technique, really, is that if your clients trust you, they're pretty willing to try what you suggest. Yeah. So um, it was fairly easy. And then with new clients, um, I would start with regular massage. And then if they wanted deeper or more pressure, I would say, well, this is as deep as I can go with my hands. Um, that I would say, you know, if you want deeper, then I'm going to have to use my feet. And then they'd say, okay. And then I, uh, you know, and I'd say, I'll just try it. And if you don't like it, we can switch, you know, no pressure. And, um, and they all, they all loved it. It's about 75% of my practice is Ashiatsu. So it's wow. a very large part of what I do. And uh, I've been doing it for seven years. So one other feature that we didn't talk about that we do have on Body Work Buddy is um, to automatically collect reviews from your oh, clients so you do that <laughs> we um we automatically collect reviews so if you create um a session record from an appointment within um 48 hours of their appointment and we do that because we want to ask them um for a review while it's still fresh in their mind yes so um you finish your um your session in body work buddy and it will automatically email them and ask them to um rate you uh zero to five stars and then um, leave a review and then you have the option to publish that onto your microsite which is your online scheduler mm -hmm. um, so you, it's really easy to just automatically collect testimonials from your clients and that's a great way to promote your business and get new clients as well when people see real testimonials that right that feature right there is has grown my practice ridiculous and I've gotten hundred over a hundred reviews that people are just like, I am so blown away about the reviews. And it's not me speaking. It's the client speaking, right. it, obviously, you know what I mean? And the fact that that is so important because many websites for holistic entrepreneurs do not have testimonials or they have like two or three. Mm -hmm. they, <clears throat> they don't understand that that is so important to have those. And then another thing is you get to start to read your client's mind. How are they speaking? What words are they using to describe their pain mm -hmm. or their health or their, you know, their wellness? Um, we also have um, support, you know, at no extra charge. So phone or email, we also have live chat. So 
Oh, um, that's and awesome. Have, yeah, and we have a member forum too. So if we're not on live chat at the moment, you can go and into the forum and um, search for, you know, if you have a question, someone else has probably asked it before. So we have a lot of information in there too. Wow, you have such a great, I just love it. That's awesome. A lot of good, good things going on with that. And then um, one of the other things I want, oh, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, you know, um, some of the backlash of what are questions that therapists have is, well, when I have online scheduling, um, I don't want just anyone to book with me. So, <laughs> or I don't want, you know, if I'm in session, I don't want to come out and see that there's another session. Right. Booked. So how do you deal with that? Um, what we have is, is people don't automatically schedule. They request an appointment and then you have to confirm it or decline it. So, um, so you won't come out a session and find that you have someone right then. And we also have settings where you can let people schedule that day or two or three or four days out. So if you don't want any more appointments, you know, for the next four days, um, your clients won't see any openings that you have tomorrow unless you want them to see those openings. Ah, oh, very good. <laughs> yeah, so it's bodyworkbuddy.com. And our blog is on there as well, where we share lots of great tips for massage therapists. And um, then we're on facebook.com slash bodyworkbuddy. Mm -hmm. And uh, same with Twitter. Okay. So, yeah. And we have a 15-day trial, no yeah, credit required. Days. So you can feel free to sign up and, and check it out. We, we definitely want to make sure that, you know, it's a good fit for therapists um, so it, if you need longer trial, you know, let us know. Another thing that we do is, um, we can import your client list for you from your existing system. So if you need to import your clients, just let us know and we can take care of that for you too. That's awesome too. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Oh, good. All right. Well, thank you, Cindy. This was so much fun. Thanks so much, Kristen. All right. I'll talk to you. All right. Bye. bye.